Hey what is going on everyone, welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Now in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the recent 2v2 challenge. Now being honest, this challenge was pretty darn hard and there's one main reason for it and that is unreliable partners. Now I can't even begin to tell you how many times in 2v2 recently when I do the quick matches and when I was doing this challenge as well that people just sat there and they did not do anything they just sit there and let your opponents do what they want with you no matter how much you try to defend and stuff on your own it's just really really not cool of them to do so if you are lagging or anything I'd really advise that you all just stay away from 2v2 it just induces so much rage when your partner is just there doing nothing and you're trying your best it, it's just really horrible so that is something that I would not wish upon anyone ever so if you guys are lagging again do not join 2v2 matches if you want to do 1v1 fine but don't do 2v2 please guys have mercy on everyone's souls out there it really upsets them and frankly I was really upset by it as well because I was on like seven or eight wins two losses and I just needed that one win for the chest on my free entry and dang it was so darn annoying when the last guy there he never dropped a card to help out at all as a matter of fact I actually lost when I entered again because at 7 or 8 wins people bailed on me yet again it, it's really not pleasant at all when your partner abandons you in 2v2 you can feel really really screwed so just try not to do that to anyone if you're lagging guys don't bother to go into any matches it's, it's just gonna upset someone really and look at this here my partner Thankfully, Jinx picks up on the queue there with my tornado, so he or she just happened to really realize that I wanted them to use the fireball and everything, and that is a great combo there for defense. Not bad overall, and I managed to send the miner up front there for some good chip damage. And now, Jinx is gonna go with an aggressive golem at the bridge with a baby dragon, and we are gonna be pushing forward and trying to take that tower. I try to get rid of those barbs, and... Thankfully with the help of the Mega Minion and stuff it kind of works out and thanks to that tornado there we managed to bring our Executioner back into cycle and with the help of the left arena tower there we managed to bring down everything together with the Executioner. That left tower there on the opponent side is just about to go down and we immediately begin to push the right side tower not giving them the chance to really assemble any kind of push and it is an all out massacre here. We are rushing for that 3 crown and look at this the enemy wakes up our king tower there in their frustration because they know they're gonna get through crown so that is gonna be a good game well played by my partner mafia jinx and i and good luck to you all in the future cleopatra and xd rock 2002 let's move on to the next fight now my partner here is tigo jantak i think i'm saying that right if i'm wrong i just probably killed his name right there so tigo is running battle ram lumberjack and bomber and stuff so it's a pretty interesting deck he has there now when I was playing this challenge I actually began using a strange deck as you might be seeing here I wanted to play around with quite a few different cards and I made a really interesting deck I'm not sure how solid it is in 2v2 but it has quite a few options for defense and you have the hog rider and miner as some pretty decent win conditions so you can get to the tower with the shovel or you can get there with your trusty mallet it doesn't matter as long as you play your cards right you're gonna get some damage done and hey at the end of the day every little bit of damage adds up overall so we drop this bandit here to try to get to the tower and the bandit she just barely gets off that shot on the tower there with her dying breath thankfully the ice spirit was not the end of her right there I'm really really unsure why my opponent didn't try to use the goblins there instead to kite because that might have done a better job overall and look at this what the heck are my opponents thinking here? What are they doing? Giant skeleton and a golem, isn't that a bit of an overcommitment? Correct me if I'm wrong folks, but dang, what were they doing? Was the mentality behind the push there to kill all our defending troops maybe? I think that's what they were trying to do. Whoever dropped the giant skeleton, they will obviously know what they were planning there. Uh, or at least let's just hope that they know what they were trying to do. Now the Inferno Dragon is absolutely killing it here. It's recently been buffed and man, it is doing work. So it melts 
giants it melts giant skeletons peckers all of these tanks really really fast now because it is able to retarget much faster than it used to in previous versions of the game our opponents here they try to block us with skeletons and some goblins i get a valuable zap there and everything pretty much dies out around here so we are just gonna reset there and ready our hog rider hog rider is coming in with a bowler there and they drop a giant skeleton on the fence the bowler is throwing his bowlers aggressively at the giant skeleton and we got a wizard now coming at us so we've got to get that tornado in rotation we've got double wizards and look at this again the inferno dragon is sort of trying to help out on the fence unfortunately the giant skeleton was not targeted by it but look at this where the heck did that golem come from i did not see when that golem was planted at all and now we're dealing with their supporting units there the bandit and jack get through all of the skeletons and the electro wizard and look at this even though they drop that giant skeleton there the bandit dashes across the arena in just the blink of an eye thanks to her new improved charging attack so she dashes really really fast now guys and she's super strong so i would really recommend using her in the 2v2 and i must say i was really really pleased with tigo as a partner and i hope that we can partner up again sometime soon but that is really really unlikely am i right guys so let's move on to this next fight and oh my goodness what is this what what the heck is going on we are back here again with tigo now what the heck super sir what the heck this was a consecutive match back to back and Tigo and I are really really shocked here because we had just came out of a successful match together in the 2v2 challenge and what are the odds Supercell decides to pair us up yet again so after being teammates for that last match up there we have a pretty good idea of how each other's decks work out together and we managed to make some really really good plays here we zap away that skeleton army there with my zap and Tigo throws arrows just on the off chance that there was a second skeleton army or maybe goblin gang or minions or something like that and we got an e coming down at us here so I am gonna clean him up with a bandit there and we're gonna throw our miner straight for that pump because we cannot let them get an elixir advantage the bandit dashes straight for the archers and cleans them up with the help of the minions and the battle ram gets straight to work on that tower it connects and deals massive damage there look at where I placed the dart goblin by the way guys I placed it so that it can go onto the right lane yet again once it finishes mopping up those minions and things are looking pretty good for us here so I don't know what Lucas was doing here I, I guess he decided to drop a golem and his partner Christian he decides to drop a giant now doesn't this seem kind of familiar folks it is just like that last matchup I have got my same old reliable partner and we have our opponents throwing a giant and golem combo at us so thankfully the giant does not carry around a bomb much like his friend the giant skeleton and look again the inferno dragon doing so much work on that tower unfortunately those dudes there at the bottom left tower there they do manage to deal a lot of chip damage so we have to rush in there with the miner and battle ram combo now the electro wizard is still alive but the baby dragon is going pretty strong and we're going really really aggressive we are trying our best not to let them get back to our tower for another push and look at this everything is just about to die out at the bridge in fact the baby dragon what am i saying not the baby dragon the inferno dragon is just about dead and we're pretty much even at this point but again we are not letting them get any more damage we throw the lumberjack in there into the mix and look at this the inferno tower goes down hog rider is reached and baby dragon on the tower that is gonna be a significant amount of damage being dealt to that tower there and we're gonna clean up with our bandit yet again and we're going straight for it folks we are going for it the opponent there they wake up our king tower in frustration but we are ready with our miner they got a skarmy there down at the left tower and they're starting up a golem push so when a golem is coming at you you gotta go opposite lane right but we're kind of worried about defense so we're trying to kill that golem there as it crosses the bridge and we've got a baby dragon and bowler trying to take care of the graveyard meanwhile hawk right on the left with the dart goblin and the battle ram as the battle ram goes up and it connects and blam that tower is down folks you gotta admit when a bandit or a battle ram connects to a tower it is one of the best feelings in the world really especially when it manages to take down the tower now we're going to be doing our last fight here it is deviation 98 and potato versus tippy toe 2016 and some guy 
whose name I can't even begin to say even if it had to save the life of me here and if you take a look at both our decks here we are both playing some really interesting hog cycle decks of course mine is kind of unofficial and not really tested that well but if we take a look at the deck potato is using he is actually using the deck that was made by surgical goblin now we are suffering a lot of damage here folks i was trying to wake up the king he was trying to defend so we kind of lost a lot of hp of our king tower there on the left and our opponents are denying our hog rider with the ice spirit and the furnace the mega minion helps clean up everything and look at this we are back to square one here with a sort of deadly push coming at us here so i'm gonna just drop my executioner there to try and take out the bulk of the troops and they have log as well so that is not good news for our little dart goblin so we are rushing once more while they are broken elixir and they drop a night witch so we know that they have this night witch now to try to prep it really and defend against it but i zap there just to get a little bit of damage off on the night witch and the minions it's sort of seeming like a valuable trade to me and potato manages to log everything away here so with the help of the goblins there the log and the goblins manage to clean up the battle ram and the goblin barrel now i did say earlier that potato is running the hog cycle deck by a surgical goblin however there's one slight adjustment to the deck and that is that he's not using skeletons in fact he is using the melee goblins now go regular goblins overall they're pretty great for two elixir they deal a lot of damage they move really fast and they have high dps so what does that mean they're, they're just a bit more reliable than skeletons and the fact that they don't die to zap means that they're a bit more versatile and that they can just provide a lot more value for you your opponent can't really zap them away to get some even elixir trades so they're pretty handy to have and look at this our right tower there well not the right sorry the left tower it is suffering a lot of damage now potato is again using the log there on the fence with the knight and stuff there helping out we managed to mitigate almost all the damage and that tower is pretty darn low so things aren't looking so hard for us here so we gotta rush here and while doing so the hog rider there gets to the tower we lightning and suddenly we are back in the game folks with just 131 hp on that left tower there we are pretty much in the game here all we need to do is just lightning the tower down or send a miner whichever one works and i have hog in my hand here and i decide you know what we're already pressuring the other lane there so i send my hog in there just to make sure that the tower goes down because their tower was pretty low on hp so they could have actually sponged the lightning with a few troops like the battle ram or maybe even the ice column and a knight or anything like that as a matter of fact the tower was so low on hp i think even their minions would have done the job there so Again, that's why I had to send the Hog Rider instead because I really wanted the tower to go down. And look at that. Potato manages to predict that Night Witch pretty accurately and she goes down instantly as soon as she spawns. So that was pretty sick there on his part. So we are going to be defending really, really well here. And Potato opts not to use the log there on time. So I use the Tornado there to gather all the goblins from the goblin barrel to the immediate right of the crown tower there you can do the same on the left it doesn't matter once the crown towers well the king tower that is was activated you can actually do that constantly to try to mitigate damage from the goblin barrel with tornado so that is just a little food for thought there and i hope you all can really try that out in the future it's actually saved me in some games and if you do it correctly you're supposed to just be pulling the goblins as soon as they spawn do not cast the tornado after they have spawned they will definitely get some chip damage down there and we are pushing hard yet again and we are still broke on elixir there for the lightning and i think just because of the pressure there that we're receiving potato opts not to use the lightning again on offense but he for whatever reason he's using the ice spirit instead of the log there i'm really really not sure why he's doing that and i placed my dark goblin on the other lane just in case they had log in rotation because i did not want to give them the log value on the tower anymore because they were just getting that easy two elixir trade there for the three elixir that we were spending and look at this folks we got another hog swing on the tower that is beautiful there and another ram coming in at us so i'm gonna have to tornado everything backwards a little bit uh, I think I kind of failed the goblin barrel, I'm not sure, but look at this, the bandit is just gonna go down in flames in the tornado there with the baby dragon. We're playing pretty good defense and slowly we're catching up, but man, the timer is running short. They're investing in a furnace there and they're gonna come in pretty soon with that battle ram if they can. And 
it was actually out of rotation so they send in the night witch instead and again it's really really tough for us to defend without giving some kind of spell value there they're chipping us down with lightning so we've kind of got to do the same there so we're using our own lightning spell there on offense trying to get some easy chip damage on the tower and look at this our crown tower is just around 686 health and their tower is over 800 so we've got quite a bit of work to do and look at this oh my goodness no no what the hell potato why would you log so early he only killed one of the goblins there that was absolutely horrible things are not looking good they can pretty much just lightning us out or just use maybe three muskets in the base or anything like that anything that works but look at this as the timer runs out what is gonna happen oh my goodness did you see that folks he killed the night witch as soon as it spawned yet again like earlier in the match and that single prediction lightning helped won us the game because the bandit was able to finish dashing to the tower and take the victory for us so as we collect these rewards from the challenge here i just like to make mention of something really really important guys if you are one of my loyal viewers from the Clash Royale Amino community, I'd really like it if you all could just check out the Clash Royale Amino channel. They're going to be doing some stuff on it pretty soon, so it's going to be pretty nice when they finally get around to uploading the videos. And trust me guys, it is going to be really really nice, so please do check out the channel and subscribe if you can, it would be awesome. So we are going to get this magical chest now for my main account and let's see what we can get. We are gonna get some gold and stuff. Anyways, besides the chest, I actually have one more thing to say. I actually managed to do a live collaboration with my friend JD's Gaming. So if you guys want to see me play live and comment at the same time, go check out his channel on YouTube. I will leave his channel in the description along with the Clash Royale Amino channel. The video isn't up yet, but if you stick around, it may be published sometime tomorrow maybe. And if by then you haven't seen it yet, and I do get to upload again sometime soon, I will definitely link the video for you all to see what was going on exactly. So yeah guys, I really really had a blast doing the collaboration and when you do get to see the video, do let me know if you want to see more collaborations between me and JD. We will try to do what we can if you enjoyed it. But the only problem is that I still can't record my videos live yet. So you'll be seeing everything from JD's perspective, but all the reactions and commentary, everything was live. So I hope you all will enjoy that. And let's just take a look at some of the highlights for today's video. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay folks, that is going to be it for today's video, hope you all enjoyed and if you did, remember to share the video with any friends or family, anyone you think that would enjoy the type of content that I am putting out. Once more, I'd like to say a special thank you to my friend Ryan from Badge of Honor for supplying us with the awesome thumbnail for today's video and to JD's Gaming for the collaboration that we did the other day. As always guys, remember, if you keep on digging, you'll eventually strike gold, but even then, keep on digging deeper, you'll eventually come across something even more worth your while. So once again everyone, thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace out guys.